Okay, this presentation is about the six C's of motivation. Uh, basically, this was proposed by Turner and Paris. The last slide showed a picture of, uh, of Paris. I couldn't find a picture of Turner. But here are the six C's. Choice, control, challenge, collaboration, constructing meaning, and consequences. Those are the six C's. And it's a model. You should try to use everything that you can. But in the end, you use what makes sense in your particular educational context. All right, let's take a look at each one of these, beginning with choice. Allowing students to make choices allows students to pick things that they think are important, that they value, or that they, that they like. Uh, so it's based on feelings. Allowing students to choose between working with a pencil and a paper. Is this a choice? Yeah, but it's not much of a choice. Uh, working on a video or uh, a paper, well, that's a little bit more of a choice. Uh, the toughest aspect of PBL is, is buy-in, trying to get kids, to, the learners, sorry, the learners uh, to have buy-in in their project. Uh, by using choice, you can facilitate buy-in by allowing them to choose something that interests them. So uh, one of the one of the differences between the two primary inquiry models we talk about, project-based learning and problem-based learning, is that in project-based learning, you have choice. You can you say you need to do a project on healthcare uh, in, in, uh, in the state of Georgia uh, on disease spreading, uh, on if to do a project on periodontal disease, um, but what that project is is entirely up to you. So, so you kind of constrain the curriculum in, in saying what you want to do, but then what that top what they choose to do uh, would be tied to what their what their interests are. Control. There's a fine line between choice and control. Uh, after all, if you have control, aren't you making choices? Yeah. Uh, so for me, the big difference is on timing and size. Choice is usually a really big decision that happens at the very beginning of, of the project, whereas control are the multitude of smaller decisions that, that you go through uh, through the whole process. Uh, another aspect of control is teacher-mandated deliverables, whether that fits a project or not. That, that, this is good and bad. A mandated deliverable. So you say, okay, here's your project. You have to have it done in six weeks. But you know what? After the first week, I want this. After the second week, I want this. After the third week, I want this. So these teacher-mandated deliverables are good in the sense that one of the most complicated parts of, of doing projects is for the learners to be uh, to manage their time. They're bad in that it takes control away. Um, so you, it's a balance, and you just have to figure that out with your particular learners. Challenge is the next thing, and this fits in really nicely with flow theory, uh, which we talked about in, in the motivation section. Uh, the, the idea of flow is that you get in this state where you just, uh, you know, you're engaged in it so much you just don't notice that time goes by. You don't notice anything. You're so engaged in whatever it is that you're doing. And to get into a state of flow, you really need to have the optimal level of challenge. If it's too much challenge, you get frustration. If it's too little challenge, you get bored. Um, so just the right amount of challenge creates a state of flow, which is a, 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 an element of motivation. Um, the tools that you have available to you as a teacher are modeling, scaffolding, and coaching. And those are the things that you can employ to control challenge. Uh, so if the challenge is too great, you can make use of these strategies to reduce uh, the level of challenge. Uh, an interesting uh, element of the success is collaboration. Collaboration can be incredibly motivating. Uh, and some of the best learning experiences I've had have been in collaboration with others. Um, some of the worst learning experiences I've had have been in collaboration with others, too. But uh, there's good and bad aspects of collaboration. But um, it's really good to put together complementary knowledge. I used to work for a company, unfortunately. It was a dot-com company that's subsequently gone out of business. 
But when they worked on projects, they would put together a team of four people. They would put together somebody who was the information architect. It was the person who was the words person. It was the, design, uh, the, the information designer. They'd get a, a creative member, and the creative member was more of a visual uh, designer. The engineer typically was a programmer, and then the person who managed everything was the project manager. Uh, and so they put these four people together on a team, and, and you'd work with a client, and and again, it, it would you would all have your different perspectives being brought to bear on the same problem, and and it created team conflict, which was a good thing. You'd have the engineer saying one thing and the information architect saying another, and that that dynamic would wind up resolving into something that was a, a, a better product. There are, of course, bad conflict uh, things that occur, and those tend to be more interpersonal, and, and, uh, and those are some of the reasons why collaboration doesn't work, is when, when you put people together that don't like being together. Okay. Constructing meaning. Uh, Students must um, must be actively engaged in the making of meaning of their learning. Construction of artifacts, six C's, goes hand in hand with project-based learning, constructionism, and learning by design. They need to be building something, and they need to talk about what they're building. And so, so one of the the key aspects of um, uh, of of the six C's of motivation is to have the kids engaged in some sort of construction constructive comprehension. Okay. And the last C is consequences. The artifacts cr created uh, as part of the constructive comprehension need to be viewed by more than the teachers. There needs to be a greater consequence. They need to be publishing in on the web. They need to be presenting it to, to planning boards. They need to be um, working with a client that they then present it to. You need some greater consequence than just uh, the turning it in for the teacher to grade. So, summary. Every effort should be made to make use of all six C's. You should do your best. Uh, and if you don't, do not use one in your design, then you need to explain why you're not doing that. So if you use the six C's of motivation as a model for my class, you need to explain why you're not using one of the C's. So you should make every effort to, to use every C. And again, in, in practice, if you can't, you can't. And then here's my little motiva motivation metaphor here. The beatings will continue until motivation improves. Okay. Well, I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.